Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at all of the latest major updates to some of your favorite emulators, including Simu, Yuzu, RPCS3 and Xenia. Most of these changes have been added to their respective emulators in the last one to two weeks, and since there's a hell of a lot to cover in this video, let's kick things off straight away and take a look at all of the latest changes in CMU Emulator's latest public release version, 119.3. To be honest, there's not a ton of changes in this 19.3 version, however, we have gotten a fix for one of the most long-standing issues on this emulator. We'll take a look at that in just a moment. First up, they have fixed an issue where launching RPX files directly without a meta file would cause the emulator to crash. This should mean that for anyone using these RPX files to launch their games directly, be it from a shortcut or using some kind of a backend to launch all your emulators from, this issue should now be completely solved. We've also been given some Vulkan and OpenGL optimizations. First of all, for Vulkan, they added support for primitive line strip adjacency. This fixes rendering bugs in Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze levels 3.6, and by properly emulating depth range on Vulkan, they have now fixed projectiles being rendered behind stages in Super Smash Bros. The final change for this release version is a tweak to the algorithm for detecting texture invalidation. This completely fixes all of the colorful rainbow texture corruptions that can occur on a ground or any geometry in The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Not a lot of changes from the CMU team in the last two weeks, but some very welcome fixes. Hopefully we'll see even more in their next release. For now, let's move swiftly along and take a look at all of the latest changes to Yuzu. One of the hottest topics in relation to Nintendo Switch emulation has been the implementation of Yuzu's multicore backend. Literally, as we speak, the PR for multicore was just merged to Yuzu's master branch, meaning that in the very next Yuzu mainline build, absolutely everyone is going to have access to multicore and all of its feature sets. This means that everyone is going to have access to asynchronous vsync, the brand new kernel rewrite, all of the benefits to performance that come from using more cores, and on top of that, we now also have access to something a lot of people have been requesting for a very long time. Let's take a quick look at it right now. This new change, which only landed in early access about 4 or 5 days ago, brings with it the implementation of most of the 32-bit CPU instructions required to boot and play 32-bit games. At time of making this video, and as far as I'm aware, all 32-bit games are now currently either booting or getting to their title screen, with many of them now also being fully playable like New Super Mario Bros U, Captain Toad, Treasure Tracker, Limbo, and many others. While games such as Tokyo Mirage Sessions are going in-game and rendering basically perfectly, they still do experience crashing from time to time. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, while booting and getting to its title screen, also suffers with crashing issues. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's issue stems from unimplemented Mii services. These should be implemented in the coming days, so keep your eyes peeled on the channel for any changes in relation to that game. In the last two days alone, we also saw a major fix for performance when using the high GPU accuracy preset. This preset is required for the correct rendering of particles, smoke and fog in Super Mario Odyssey, and as is very apparent in the gameplay you're watching, this fix has almost doubled performance in some areas like Metro Kingdom, Lost Kingdom, or any other areas that require high GPU accuracy for the correct rendering of particles. Yet another title greatly affected by this optimization to the high GPU accuracy is The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. This game, if you're not aware, also requires high GPU accuracy for the correct rendering of smoke, fog, wind drifted particles and other particle effects in gameplay, and again, as with Super Mario Odyssey, thanks to this optimization and improvement, Breath of the Wild is now almost at double the performance level when high GPU accuracy is utilized. On Yuzu itself, Breath of the Wild has seen a lot of optimizations as of late, and while many of you may not think that Breath of the Wild's playability on Yuzu is very important, mostly due to the existence of CMU and this game's compatibility there, but with the impending release of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild's sequel at some point in future, 
the compatibility and performance levels of this game could prove to be very important for that title when it eventually releases. A little off topic, but for anybody who wants to try out the new 60 frames per second or 1080p mod for Breath of the Wild on Yuzu, I will leave links to the mod page for them down in this video's description. Please be aware that both of these mods require your game to be at version 1.6.0. Before taking a look at even more performance optimizations, we're going to jump quickly back to Super Mario Odyssey and take a look at another awesome graphical optimization we've been given in the last week. Now for anybody who's played Mario on Yuzu, you may have already experienced this horrible vertex triangle issue. This mainly happens in Lake and Ruin Kingdom, though it also occurs every time you take damage in gameplay. At the present moment, this issue has now been completely fixed for all NVIDIA GPUs with the exception of Turing, though in the coming days there should be an additional fix added to fix this rendering issue on the Vulkan API on all GPU vendors. With this graphical fix applied, Super Mario Odyssey on Yuzu edges ever closer to being perfectly rendered. The final set of changes we're going to be taking a look at on this Switch emulator relate mostly to the Xenoblade titles, namely Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition, Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and Xenoblade Chronicles 2 Torna. These performance improvements and stability fixes come mainly thanks to optimizations to the GPU macro JIT and also several optimizations to this emulator's recompiler dynamic. Again, as demonstrated by the gameplay you're watching, these changes greatly improve the performance stability of Xenoblade Chronicles games, though unfortunately, due to an unrelated change, these titles are also now prone to vertex explosions after about 20 minutes in gameplay. These issues are currently being tracked, so hopefully they will be fixed in the coming days. Some pretty exciting changes coming to not only early access but also the mainline builds and with multicore now being merged to mainline so everyone can use it, there has literally never been a better time to download and check out Yuzu Emulator. If you're looking for a clear and concise setup guide that shows you absolutely every single step and setting, you'll find my complete setup guide for Yuzu down in this video's description. Moving swiftly along once again, let's take a look at some of the latest changes to Xenia, an emulator for the Xbox 360. Thanks to the implementation of bindless textures, we have seen a very, very nice performance increase across a multitude of games on this 360 emulator. To give you a little bit more background information on what this means, I'm going to read you a small excerpt given to us by the developers of Xenia. On the technical side, what this means is that the long process of writing all the texture descriptors every time a texture or shader is changed is now completely gone. This writing process was previously a major bottleneck on the graphics API side and previous to this was completely out of our control. This new feature is enabled by default and will work on all hardware supporting a DirectX 12 resource binding tier 2. This means NVIDIA GPUs starting from Kepler, most AMD GPUs and Intel iGPUs starting from Skylake are now supported with this feature. Though I've had limited time to test the differences in performance with bindless texture support, I can report that in games like Sonic the Hedgehog, Red Dead Redemption and the Call of Duty series are greatly improved, with Red Dead improving in performance by 7 to 8 frames per second scene dependent. On top of the addition of bindless texture support, Xenia has undergone quite a big stability improvement with many of its GPU or device loss errors now being completely fixed. There are still a few that occur from time to time, meaning that game stability isn't absolutely perfect, however, it is many, many times better than it was previously. With all of these performance and stability improvements, paired with the improvements to robustness of their shader cache, the future is definitely looking bright for Xenia and Xbox 360 emulation. For now, we're going to move on to RPCS3 and take a look at the awesome new patch manager which was just added in the last few weeks to this PlayStation 3 emulator. Now for anybody who's used RPCS3 before, you would know that their patches work basically by text files. However, thanks I think mostly to Mega Mouse, we now have this built-in patch manager which works off a brand new patch format. You can see here that by simply opening your game and game version, you can activate whatever patches you want to use. For example, for Persona, you have access to your 60fps patch, your bust-up mod patch and any of the other music or game enhancement mods 
Or for The Last of Us that I covered in a video very recently, you can activate all of these optimizations that greatly boost its performance. Now, to use the brand new patch format, you need to place the new patch.yml into the patches folder which will be within your RPCS3 main directory. Please be aware that older patch.yml formats will no longer work and are no longer compatible with this new patch format. If you want to find the latest and greatest patches for many of your favorite PS3 games, I'll leave a link to the game patch wiki down in the description of this video for anybody looking for a pre-made patch containing all of the latest patches at time of making this video, you can find my pre-made one linked down below. While there are a hell of a lot of more changes to RPCS3 that have have been added in the last week or so, I haven't had too much time to test most of them so they will be included in my next roundup video for all of the latest changes to your favourite emulators. For now at least, that's going to be it for this one. As always, thank you all very much for watching, I greatly appreciate your viewership and support. As always, if there are any games on any of these emulators you would like me to personally check out, don't be afraid to leave me a comment and if I can get access to that game I will try to test it out. And as always, for my Patreon supporters, if there are any games you want to see me test, either drop me a message over there or leave me a comment in the Patreon channel over on my Discord. A massive thank you to all of my Patreon supporters. There aren't a lot of you, but believe me, every single one of you who helps to support my channel is greatly appreciated, especially in these very hard times over the past few months. Once again, guys, thank you all very much for watching. As I said, I greatly appreciate it. As always, remember to like this video if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.